I want to briefly deal with warfare of the mind. And people of the most high need to really protect their mind. Again, you really need to protect your mind because if you are not careful, it will be so easy to throw you overboard. We're living in those days where the Bible says that men's hearts will fail them for fear and for the things that are coming upon the earth. Now, for those of you that choose to not believe, that's your choice. That's the option. That's your free will to not believe. It doesn't mean that you should comment this video and tell me how much you don't believe and how real God is not to you. Apparently, this message is not for you, but it's for those that believe. I want to read an article or a portion of an article where Joe Biden warns a winter of severe illness and death for unvaccinated due to Omicron. Keep in mind, the unvaccinated people are being targeted. It's the unvaccinated people that's responsible for vaccinated people that's getting sick with COVID. I'll repeat that again. The protected people, the vaccinated people that get COVID while they're vaccinated, the unvaccinated people are to blame. I want to read this article to you, a portion of it. It says, President Joe Biden on Thursday warned people who are not vaccinated against COVID-19 are looking at a very bleak and dangerous winter if they do not get their shots soon. And then it says in quotes, I want to send a direct message to the American people Due to the steps we've taken, Omicron has not yet spread as fast as it would have otherwise done, Biden said in remarks at the White House following his COVID-19 briefing on Thursday. And then it says in quotes, but it's here now and it's spreading and it's going to increase. We are looking at a winter of severe illness and death for unvaccinated for themselves, their families, and the hospitals they are soon overwhelmed. But there's good news, he says. If you're vaccinated and you have your booster shot, you're protected from severe illness and death the president added. And then he says, we're going to protect our economic recovery. If we do this, we're going to keep schools and businesses open. And I want to see everyone in around enjoy that. I want to see them enjoy the fact that they're able to be in school, that businesses are open and the holidays are coming. He continued. And then it says Biden warning comes as a course of public health officials are calling on Americans to get boosted to prevent serious illness. Now, unvaccinated people are targeted individuals. But for those of you that trust and believe in the most high. I have a few scriptures I want to read to you. The first scripture is taken from Isaiah, the, 45th, the 41st chapter, reading the 10th verse. And it reads as follows. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. 
I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. I want to read another scripture. Proverbs third chapter, reading the 24th to the 26th verse. And it reads as follows. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down and thy sleep shall be sweet. In other words, there's no reason why you should be losing sleep over what's going on in this world. The Bible says men's heart will fail them for fear and for what's coming upon the earth. But for those righteous people, according to the scripture I just read you, it says, when thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Fear is your enemy. It doesn't matter how much fear they feed to your mind. They feed to your spirit. You can overcome that fear. The Most High says, do not be afraid. And then the 25th verse says, be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. In other words, you won't lose strength in your feet. You're able to stand firm to the profession of your faith. I'm going to read that 26 verse again. For the Lord shall be thy confident. You shall be confident just knowing that the Lord is keeping you, that the Lord is protecting you, that the Lord will see you through. You must hold fast to the profession of your faith. And be not afraid. The next scripture is taken from the book of Revelation, the second chapter, reading the 10th verse. And it reads as follows. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Now, this is not saying that you're not going to go through anything. It's not saying that you're not going to get sick. But it's telling you that if sickness happened to come upon you, fear none of those things. Again, it says, fear none of those things which thou shall suffer. In other words, you will go through something. But do not be afraid. Then it says, behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried. Remember the video I did a few days ago when I talked about what Job went through and how Job was tested, how he had to deal with his children being destroyed and all that he had was destroyed and even he got sick. To the point where his friends started saying it was something that you did in your life to cause this to come upon you. And then his wife says, you need to curse your God and die. So he had mockers and scoffers coming at him from every direction. On top of the trials and tribulations that he had to endure. But the Bible says in everything that he went through, he did not charge God foolishly. So again, the 10th verse says, fear none of those things which thou shall suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison like the article I just read. Or like I mentioned about 
the senator that wanted to vote on a bill to put unvaccinated people in detention camps. But it says, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried. And ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death. And I will give thee a crown of life. Now, that's a very important verse right there. This is a verse that many people don't want to have to deal with. You want to be able to pray and trust in God and everything is okay and your family's safe. Some of you have not been tested positive for COVID. None of you got sick. And you brag about how the Lord has kept you. That's good. But not only it says that some of us will be cast in the prison and that we may be tried. See, you're not going to get in the paradise for free. The Bible says to prevent your to present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And then it says to not be conformed to this world, but be transformed, be changed by the renewing of your mind to prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So it says, behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried and ye shall have tribulation 10 days. Be thou faithful unto death. Even if you test positive for COVID and you get sick at the point of death, the Bible says to be faithful. Don't be like those people that Trust God only when things are going well. As long as things are good, food is in your cabinet, you have money in your pocket, you're happy. You trust in God. God is good. But the minute you start dealing with trials and tribulation and sickness and disease and lack, then you begin to start questioning God because your faith start wavering. And then you have the naysayers that would say, see, you should have got your shot. You should have been vaccinated. If you had been vaccinated, you would be saved. But the Bible says that you shall have tribulation 10 days. Be thou faithful unto death, even if it means you losing your life, be faithful. And then it says, and I will give you a crown of life. The final scripture I want to read is taken from Philippians, the fourth chapter, reading the sixth to the 13th verse. And I want you to pay close attention to what this is saying. Because this is a roadmap to you being an overcomer. A roadmap to victory. The sixth verse says, be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving. That your request may be made known unto God. And the peace of God. Which passes all understanding. Shall keep your hearts and mind through Jesus Christ. And then it says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. Now, there are so many lies that's on this earth. It's to the point where it's hard to believe what's real. It's hard to believe what's true. It's hard to be able to tell the difference between 
what's true and what's false. But if you stay in your word, if you stay prayerful, you'd be okay. When you go outside of the word of God, then you fall into, it's easy for you to fall into a snare because now you're going according to your own understanding and you're open to the whispers of Satan. So the word of God is your sword. This is what keeps you knowing the word of God. Because if it's not according to God's word, you need to throw it away from you. Don't even entertain the thought. And that's why it's so important for the devil to distract you from the word of God. The devil try to get you to disbelieve and throw away your Bible. Don't believe in it. It's a fairy tale. It contradicts itself. Those are the tricks of the devil. That's the voice of Satan speaking to you. So it says, finally, brethren, what sort of things are true? What sort of things are honest? It's hard for people to be honest nowadays. Everybody's got some type of gimmick or scam to try to survive. I call it the survival of the fittest. So what sort of things are honest? What sort of things are just? What sort of things are pure? What sort of things are lovely? What sort of things are of good report? If there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. So these are the things that you should be thinking on. Things that are true, things that are honest, things that are just, things that are pure, things that are lovely, things that are of a good report. You want to hear positive things, man. Things that's, that's, that will build your confidence, that will build your faith. You need to let all of that negativity go. Don't even keep company with people that are negative. Don't you hate clicking on videos and all you hear is a bunch of folks arguing and fighting among themselves, threatening each other, doxing people, talking about their families, exposing their children? Why would you want to... Fill your mental Rolodex with that garbage. And then you wonder why you're depressed. You wonder why you're sad. You wonder why you can't hear the voice of God. Because you have so much garbage that's taking residence in your mind. And that's getting inside your spirit. And working worse than the virus that they say that's in this world. So things that are true, things that are honest, things that are just, and just means fair or righteous. Things that are pure, things that are lovely, things that are of a good report. It says if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Then the ninth verse says, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last hour, that now at the last your care of me has flourished again. Wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. 
Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith be content. I'm going to read that 11th verse again and take note. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I'm in, therewith to be content. So regardless of where you find yourself in life, you could be on the highest peak and you could be in the lowest valley. You could be happy one day, the next day you're sad or depressed. But the Bible says whatever state that you find yourself in, learn to be content. Stay prayerful, stay encouraged, and endure. The 12th verse says, I know both how to be abased and I know how to be abound. In other words, I know how to be up when things are going well and I know when how to be down. I know how to uh, just let things ride out. Sometimes you, 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 you're doing well, your pockets are full, your cabinets are full, and then there's other times your pockets are empty. But even in those times of lack, you have to learn to be content and trust in the Most High. I know it's hard for some people but trust in God and he always make a way. But you have to be faithful. I know how to be both. It says, I know, I know both how to be a base and I know how to be a bound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and to suffer need. See? And then in the 13th verse says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. So in spite of what you go through, know where your strength comes from. It's not in money. It's not in food. It's not in transportation because you have to Take the bus to work because your car is not working. Be content. Don't allow your pride to get in the way. Get on that bus and do what you have to do. Remain faithful. I'm going to read the 12th and the 13th verse again, and I'm going to end on that note. I know both how to be abased. In other words, I know how to be down. And I know how to be abound and how to be up. It says, everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. And in the 13th verse, it says, I can do all things. That's what people, people of the most high that's the language you have to learn to speak. I can. Instead of I can't or you find yourself doubting yourself or doubting God. Just know where your help comes from. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. So. There is a world warfare of the mind. And. One of the armors, the Bible tells you to put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You have to put on that helmet of salvation that protects your mind. The helmet of salvation protects your mind. You have to know that you are saved. You have to know who you are in Christ. And then you have the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. This is your sword. This is what you fight with. You fight with the word. You don't fight with what you think or what you feel. You fight with the word. And try to avoid 
foolish conversations. Every now and then I'll get somebody to comment a video. They have no videos. They have no photo. And they will say something goofy to me. In many cases, I don't even respond. And sometimes I may respond just to see if this is a troll. And lo and behold, they come back with a troll remark. And in most cases, I just delete their comment and block them. I don't have time for foolishness. And many of those that name the name of Christ have to get into that same mind frame to not entertain foolishness. Separate yourself from that. The Bible says, come out from among them and be separate. And when they say, you think you're better? Yes, I am. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. So feedback, tell me what you think until next time. I'm fearless.